So now I would like to introduce Her Excellency Samira Bawimia, the second lady of Ghana, who has appeared, I hope, on screen alongside a member of our panel on methane action plans, who I will also introduce shortly. Her Excellency is our second keynote speaker of the day. She is the ambassador for the Global Alliance for Clean Cookstoves and UN ambassador for SG SDG 7 to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all by 2030. Her Excellency has received the prestigious Ashton Award in recognition of her significant contribution towards mobilizing action on SDG 7. I was fortunate to share a platform with Her Excellency at COP26 and was frankly astonished by her presentation and the terrible impacts short-lived climate pollutants, such as methane and black soot, have on millions of people around the world. The devastation on people and planet demands immediate action. Aligning with agendas on the green revolution and education of the girl child, AD has a key role to play in emerging economies. Before I hand over, to, uh, uh, hand over the platform, uh, please note that Samira will be staying with us uh, for the panel discussion on methane action plans, following which there will be opportunities to ask questions. Again, virtual delegates, please place your questions in the Q&A panel to the right of your screen. Her Excellency, Samira Bawumia, over to you. Thank you so much, Charlotte, and um, it's real honor to join you today. And um, I suppose this summit speaks to our collective determination to champion and advocate issues critical to climate, environment, gender, health, and livelihood inequalities. And I'm very grateful to the World Biogas Association for the honor of inviting me to share my perspectives. And I'd like to commend Rick Duke also for his very insightful comments as well. Um, ladies and gentlemen, environmental protection is becoming a huge and urgent issue for the modern industry. Global warming and the reduction of greenhouse emissions have become issues of global interest and worldwide over 105 billion tons of organic waste are generated every year. Yet only 2% of these organics are currently being recycled. These organic wastes include food waste, sewage, garden waste, food and drink processing waste, farm and agricultural waste. Without effective management, these wastes could contribute to the pollution to the, of the planet. They contribute to contamination of our water bodies, reduce air quality, and emit methane directly into the atmosphere, greenhouse gas, far more potent than carbon dioxide. As a global champion for the Clean Cooking Alliance and the Health and Energy Platform for Action, HEPA, at the World Health Organization, WHO, this is an issue that I'm really passionate about, and I'm looking towards addressing and we we're reminded at COP24 that the climate change is moving faster than we are. So we face an imminent threat in spite of all our efforts and clean cooking is really a significant part of this conversation that we're having. Unfortunately, clean cooking has not been given the necessary attention and investment despite its enormous effect across the sustainable development agenda. Globally, more than 2.5 billion people lack access to clean cooking facilities, relying instead on solid biomass, kerosene or coal as their primary cooking fuel. In Africa, the numbers continue to rise. Close to 940 million of the continent's population lack clean cooking solutions. And despite unclean cooking being a leading source of global air pollution and causing more deaths every year than HIV, AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis combined, it is one of the most underfunded and furthest behind indicators in the SDGs, receiving less than 1% of the estimated resources needed to address it. According to Africa Renewal, a magazine published by the United Nations for Africa, 
the estimated economic cost of premature deaths from ambient particulate matter pollution in 2013 was $215 billion. The estimated economic cost of premature death from household air pollution stood at 230 billion US dollars. This was in 2013, but you can only imagine the cost today. This, and it is mostly women who bear the brunt of this cost in the form of poor health, insecurity, gender and inequality, and the loss of productivity. Air pollution causes more than 7 million deaths every year with 1.1 million deaths occurring in Africa. Household air pollution, which is driven largely by indoor cook stoves, accounted for 700,000 fatalities, while increased outdoor air pollution claimed 400,000 lives. And each of these lives represents a daughter, a father, a mother, a friend, a loved one. And these deaths are avoidable and unacceptable. The United Nations Environment Programme and World Meteorological Organization estimates that the specific reduction in short-lived climate pollutants could save 2.4 million lives by 2030 alone. And a transition to clean energy must be achieved with that, cannot be achieved without sustained support and participation for all of us, from all of us. The World Energy Outlook estimates about 55% of the cumulative emissions are linked to consumer choices. And these energy choices affect multiple aspects of people's lives, from transport to heating and cooking to urban planning and jobs. And we all have a role to play in addressing this clean cooking issue. Now, biogas as an alternative to burning, polluting wood, dung or fossil fuel for energy, household energy, Biogas could also help slow climate change, improve global health, reduce agricultural losses, increase energy access and provide people's lives and improve people's lives and businesses. However, it's still currently massively underutilized technology. And by turning organic waste into renewable energy source, the production of biogas and anaerobic digestion offers a window into a world in which resources are continuously used and reused, one in which rising demand for energy services can be met while also delivering on wider environmental benefits. We need to prioritize its deployment as a major policy initiative while we take measures to address the issues of water and air pollution, as well as access to clean energy. Reducing net zero energy globally by 2050 is a critical and formidable goal, and it hinges on alternative, formidable and clean technologies. With 2030 less than 10 years away, we no longer have the luxury of waiting or taking baby steps. On this year's World Environmental Day, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Gutierrez, stated, and I quote, this planet is our only home. It is vital we safeguard the health of its atmosphere, the richness and diversity of life on Earth, its ecosystem, the finite resources, but we're also failing to do so. We're asking too much of our planet. Earth's natural systems cannot keep up with our demands, end quote. And I couldn't agree more. We cannot reach our goal of delivering on several of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals without changing our business as usual approach. The COVID-19 pandemic, however, has had devastating effects on health and economic consequences with unprecedented disruptions to people's lives and the global economy. As nations look to rebuild their economies in the wake of COVID, it is important that we emphasize on building back better through a green recovery and as the world crude prices also are reaching unbelievable highs, it is imperative that we remove these barriers that inhibit scaling up of ad adoption and deployment of this alternative and renewable technology solutions. The high investment costs, coupled with a lack of subsidies, financial support programs, and soft loans are critical economic barriers, especially in developing countries. And also the cultural resistance fueled often by misconceptions to these solutions are all, all impacts by gas adoption and dissemination. 
The Climate Clean Air Coalition estimates that 30 million households in Africa could use a biodigester, but less than 1% actually has one. So Africa is really an untapped resource and an opportunity hub for all of us. I want to focus also, we all need to focus on the affordability of this technology. Innovation is also key and critical to ensuring its widespread adoption and sustainable development. Reducing prices via low cost design, low cost local production, and innovative financing model can also lower upfront costs. Local solutions require local participation and ownership in order to succeed. Governments might, must prioritize solutions and translate their global commitments into concrete evidence-based policies. The world has a huge challenge to move to net zero by 2050, and clean cooking is at the heart of it. Biogas is also a critical part of it. Emission reduction has to go hand in hand with efforts to ensure energy access for all by 2030. In doing so, let us engage political and business leaders, especially make policy makers, experts and civil society while building local capacity. The development of biomethane and biogas goes hand in hand with the energy transition we're witnessing and ensuring access to affordable, reliable and sustainable solutions for all is essential to the cause of achieving healthy lives and sustainable development. And I urge all of us to be focused on getting more action to be taken to integrate household energy solutions in order to achieve success, not just for our present generation, but, but for all generations to come. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Her Excellency. That was an excellent message for us all to uh, receive.